Hey everybody, David Jordan. Thanks for watching. Today I want to show you how to clean and properly lubricate the Smith & Wesson M&P Shield. I love going to the range and shooting. I love to train. I love to practice. But I believe that you should take care of your firearms so that they will take care of you. Okay, so I, I just use uh, some basic things for cleaning. I'm going to use a, a brush. Um, you know, you can get these at any gun store. I always keep my little trusty Barlow. It's very sharp. It might help me get some of the carbon deposits out. I use a, a bore swab, uh, a brush, a screwdriver. There's a, a, a sear deactivation lever in the uh, Smith & Wesson shield that I will use that for. I'll show you. Uh, and just a, a rod to clean. This comes with the Glock pistol and I find it's pretty handy for uh, a lot of stuff. Uh, I'm also using uh, a, a glo rubber gloves just simply because uh, it's a mess cleaning a gun sometimes and I like uh, my wife uh, has reaction to some of the solvents so when I'm done I like to be able to just take it off and throw it away then I can wash my hands and I don't still have that residual smell. I also have cotton swabs. I use a lot of them, uh, as you will see, some uh, cleaning patches. Uh, I'm trying out a couple of other uh, products today uh, that, that are new to me. Uh, this one is not. Hops number nine, uh, if you've ever owned a gun and haven't used Hops number nine, I would be surprised. Uh, I, I still like it fine for most general clean, uh, cleaning. Uh, it works just fine. Uh, you don't always have to have the, the, the newest thing. Uh, also, a friend of mine recommended the Blast and Shine. You know, a lot of my friends use uh, like brake cleaner and things like that to clean their guns. Uh, I, I thought I would try this. They can kind of compare that. I haven't tried it, so we'll see how it works. Uh, as far as uh, lubrication, today we're using uh, Tetra Gun Lubricant. Um, I find that it, it really does uh, work well. Uh, I've had, I actually have it uh, down in one of these little bottles uh, so I can get some uh, precision uh, uh, lubrication. You know, precision lubrication is very important. Uh, I've got a, a little cup here that I'm going to pour some of the solvent into. Um, and a, a rag to uh, just kind of wipe things up. I've actually got a couple of rags and we may grab a few things uh, along the way. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put my gloves on. All right. First things first, uh, I'm going to uh, uh, take, remove the magazine, set it aside, get rid of the live round that's in the chamber. Then I'm going to uh, pull the slide all the way to the rear, use the slide stop to lock it in place. Then there is a, uh, a deactivation lever down in here, a sear deactivation lever, and I'm putting a light on it because it's actually painted yellow. Uh, and with the naked eye, it's very hard to see that uh, without light. So I'm gonna take the screwdriver and put that in there and push that sear down. It takes almost no pressure at all. Just push it down until it stops. Uh, then I will pull the takedown lever down, hold onto the slide, uh, deactivate the slide stop and just let the slide come all the way forward. It'll come right off. All right. So I set the receiver down. Out. The, uh, the barrel will come right on out. So there it is. Uh, the field strip. Uh, the field stripped uh, uh, pistol. And this is all where, as far as I'm going to take it down for general cleaning. Uh, and, I, and I suggest strongly that uh, anything you do past here, you need to have a, uh, a certified armor to do, or at least certified armor's training. All right, from here, what I'm going to do is take the barrel. I'm going to take a, another rag that I've got just so I don't get everything all over the table. I'm 
I'm just going to kind of spray down the barrel. Um, I probably used way too much of that, but I'm okay with uh, just to make sure that I use too much. Uh, carbon builds up down here uh, and toward the end a lot. Don't forget the, the end of the month barrel uh, as well. Uh, and from there, I'm going to let that sit. Uh, one thing I notice uh, immediately with this, again, it's a new product for me, is that it dries almost immediately. So uh, maybe soaking that's not going to be a good thing. Another way uh, that you can do that would be to take the solvent and just put it in some kind of container like that. That's what I do. Uh, and I'm going to put dip a little uh, pad down in there and just kind of saturate the barrel with it. Make sure you get down in the lugs good. Um, feed ramp. Uh, you can see some of it's already starting to come off. And I'm going to take the swab and just put that on there. And then I'm going to insert it all the way in. And all I'm doing here is just putting the solvent in there so that it can, you know, uh, st start doing its thing while we're doing other things. So I'm going to just take this and set it aside. The recoil spring assembly, I'm not going to do much with. Uh, I'm actually, uh, usually all I do there is just kind of wipe it down with a, a, a rag with a little bit of solvent on there. I'm going to dry that off a little bit, wipe it down. I also want to check the spring and stuff like that, make sure it's still uh, function. I always do a little function check while I've got it apart and just put that aside. With the, the slide, I'm going to take that same uh, applicator. I'm just going to kind of start wiping the inside. Now something to consider, uh, you'll notice that I've got the firing pin chamber opening facing down. That's just so I don't get any extra uh, liquids or anything like that inside the firing pin chamber. Any, any kind of liquids or oil or anything like that is going to help collect debris and things that may cause the weapon to malfunction. And I don't want that. So I'm going to put some solvent in there. And then, then I'm just going to kind of take that brush. And you don't have to scrub hard, just uh, a little bit. I dip it down the solvent a little bit and just kind of give it a go that way. Um, if you kind of look at the slide while you're doing it, you can tell where the carbon deposits are. I'm also, with the brush, I'm, I want to make sure that I get inside the rail, inside the rails here uh, that are going to slide on the receiver. Uh, just if you think about like a train on a track, uh, that has to, you, you want that to be clean uh, so that, uh, get all that debris out so that the action works the way it's intended to. Clean all that. I'm not, uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't expect that when I'm finished, it will be the most immaculate cleaning job in the world. I'm, I'm only concerned with good functionality. Uh, proper maintenance will help keep my weapon, you know, operating if I need it. And so I don't go overboard with it. I just do what I need to do. I'm going to let that sit for a minute and then I'll come back to it. On the receivers, generally where I go to town with my uh, Q-tips, I just dip it down in the solvent a little bit, and I'm going to start working it around all the working pieces in there. I don't, you'll notice I don't use a, a lot of solvent. 
just what I think is necessary. The reason I like Q-tips so much is because they you can work them down in the little spaces. They're uh, they're affordable, and uh, I can clean so many things on my pistol that I wouldn't be able to get to otherwise. So you see just the, in the little nooks and crannies, a lot of debris there. You may not want to go to that level. It's just something I do. I, I, don't, I don't clean my weapon after every time I shoot it, even though I probably should. Uh, I clean it, you know, every so often on a regular basis. I make sure that it's functional. And uh, I believe that, you know, maybe every time you use it might be a little excessive. If you've got a quality gun, it should not cause the, the weapon to malfunction. But like I said, if you take care, you know, you you're, you're, you bought your uh, firearm theoretically to protect you or to, to be utilized for, you know, hunting or whatever the case may be. And uh, if it doesn't function, even if you bought it for sport, if the weapon doesn't function when it's intended to, uh, then you don't even get the thrill from the sport. So I just think it's important to, um, you know, clean it regularly. Like you don't have to wash your car every day, but you should wash it on a regular basis. All right. So I'm going to move the trigger around a little bit. I want to make sure that um, the slide rails, I get those again. The action will operate sliding on these four rails, and I want to make sure that those work well. Then I'm going to take a couple of patches. The good thing I, I like about like white patches and white Q-tips and things like that is it's almost like a white glove test. When you start to get less and less discoloration, you know, from oils and stuff like that, you know that you've done the job. Hopefully you already know this, but uh, in case you don't, we don't lubricate the, the magazine well. Now I will, on occasion, uh, as a matter of fact, I'll do it today, I'll take my little swab or something like that and I'll clean out that magazine well. Uh, d dirt, debris, you know, if you're training out in the field and you get dirt all over your magazine and stuff like that, it can get in the magazine well. So I might kind of brush that out a little bit with a light solvent or whatever. And then uh, when it's clean to my satisfaction, I'll kind of stop there. Make sure that it's dry and leave it alone. We do not uh, lubricate the magazine well. All right, so that looks pretty good to me. And I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to go back to my slide here. Uh, I think it's I'll start wiping the solvent off of it and I'll just check it, you know, as I go to see if there's carbon buildup on anything. Sometimes you get it around uh, the mouth of the muzzle and so I might, you know, hit it again if you if you see the carbon buildup. I take the opportunity to kind of clean around the sights as well. You don't have to. It's Sometimes dirt and debris kind of gets down in the in the, the sights. This one does not have uh, night sights on it yet, but it will. I, bl I don't think that you ought to have a defensive weapon without night sights. That's a, a lot of the uh, your you know your altercations could occur in low light conditions, and if you can't see your sights, it is a bigger guessing game. And I like to put the odds in my favor. Back to the Q-tips. Let me get down in all the little nooks and crannies that I want to get into. I even clean out around the firing pin safety. While I've got it out, uh, I might function check the firing pin safety. And, and, and how that works is when you look at, and I'm not sure that you can see this, but when you look at the firing pin, and, and here's the tang of the firing pin, when you push it forward, the firing pin uh, will not go into the firing pin hole right there. But if you 
push down on the firing pin safety. It's just got a spring in there. Then you should be able to push the firing pin uh, all the way into the hole. And I'm not sure if you see it right there. So I'll take and kind of make sure that the firing pin safety is uh, working by pushing it down. The spring should push it back up. I will even take the screwdriver and pull back pin and it should pull forward. So it should meet resistance. It is. The firing pin safety push down uh, allows the, the firing pin to go forward into the hole. So I'm happy with that. Also, the extractor claw right there is on a spring and it should uh, be able to like spring this way. So I'm going to kind of push on that and make sure that it moves and it does. So, uh, so, so everything's working well here. I'll take my rag and kind of wipe her down. Double check, make sure that I haven't left unnecessary solvents on anything. Set that aside. This looks pretty good, the receiver. So I think we're ready to go. Uh, that's about all I'm going to do to it. As far as the, the cleaning, we've got the uh, barrel left. I'm going to take it and clean those lugs out real good, catch it around the feed ramp. On the opening in the front there. I'll go ahead and run this back through there again. I'm interested to use the um, the blast and shine barrel blaster on my uh, rifle as well uh, when it because it really gets filthy if you if you own a, a the rifle I'm talking about is an is an AR and uh, if you've run an AR through heavy training you kind of get the idea it's a it can turn into a real mess so I'm interested to use it on that take my bore brush. And I just run it down all the way through, all the way back. I do that a couple times. And then I'm going to check it. If you're not sure how to check it, you just kind of hold that into the light. If you, uh, like I'll show you with a flashlight. If you take and look at it, uh, like hold, hold the barrel up to the light, you should be able to see the rifling grooves uh, inside. And they should be clean and you will see the, the dulling matte uh, discoloration if there is carbon deposits in there. This one looks pretty good, so uh, that's enough for that. I'll set that aside. Take a clean cloth and start running it through. I'm just going to run that through. And back. And I'll do that a couple of times. Some people say don't ever do that. Uh, I do. So there. And I will get another one. And what we're doing here is just swabbing it out real good. We're uh, making sure that we get out the solvent, the carbon deposits, any junk and crap and stuff. I do it two or three times and I swap them and then I get another patch. Again, it's kind of like a white glove test. When it comes out clean, then I will check the, the barrel with my, uh, you know, visually just to, to see if I can see anything in there. I'll do one more and that's going to be good for me. All right, that's looking pretty clean. 
I'm happy with that. We're going to set that stuff aside. I didn't even need to use the Carbon Scraper 2000. So one thing I do like about that Blast and Shine from Hops is that it dries very quickly. That, that could be a bad thing, uh, but it, it can also be a good thing because there's not a lot of solvent to wipe off. It's gone. All right, the, uh, the barrel looks pretty clean all the way around. The lugs are clean. The feed ramp is clean. Uh, lo looks good to me. So let's lubricate the sucker. This is why I like the uh, little applicator. You know, you can go on the internet and hear all kind of theories on lubrication. What I know is the manufacturer recommends and I recommend light lubrication on a, uh, a fighting pistol. So what I do is a drop on all, I do one drop for all four of the feed rails. I don't actually put it on the feed rail, some, some people do. I just put it on my finger and that's literally uh, all I'm going to use. And I'm going to put it there. Remember, uh, when you use a lot of oil, the, the downside to it is that it can just collect dirt, dust, debris. A lot of people say, well, yeah, I don't think it'll do that. Well, if, it stay, if your pistol stays in your closet or your gun safe throughout the year, it will, it will attract less dust and debris down in the, the working part of the gun uh, because you never use it. So if you've got a firearm, you should use, use it. All right, so I'm happy with that. Uh, where I am going to use the applicator is right down in here. I do want to put a little bit down in here. Where there's metal in metal, I'm just going to put one drop. On the Glock, I've actually seen um, that one drop back in that area uh, that not lubricating it seized up the whole gun. Of course, it was uh, there were uh, well over two or 3,000 rounds fired through it. Uh, but it was interesting that once we put the drop back there and started working the trigger, after just a few seconds, it was fully functional again. My uh, Something else to consider with the uh, M&P Shield is right around the magazine release latch, uh, I, I carry this on my body, so it, it, it gets a like a, a coating there. I'm, I'm not really sure what that is, and I was I kind of... I'm going to go ahead and put some of that on there and scrub that out. I had almost let that go and I don't want to do that. I want to make sure that that is functional in case I need to do a magazine change. You may not be able to see that discoloration right there, but but that's um, that's what it does. And um, right there, it's kind of a rust looking color and I don't want that to foul up the operation, so I'm going to brush that to my satisfaction. That looks pretty good to me. Again, I, you know, my, my, my gun doesn't have to be shiny and that kind of stuff. It, it is a functional. It's like, to me, this is like cleaning a hammer. Uh, and I'm sure a lot of you think, you know, very similar to that. Uh, all right, so we have lubricated the rails. I'm happy with that. I will take, again, for me, it's simple. I put a drop. There's a drop. And I'm going to lubricate the barrel. That way I literally just do it with my hand. And uh, I'm going to lubricate the whole thing. I'm not going to like lubricate the feed ramp or anything like that. Anything that, you know, like where the, the that has to work like that, I, I don't want fouling and stuff in there. So I just don't. You might, if, if you're into it, you might take a, a little drop or something. Just kind of run it through the lug. I don't even know that that would be important, but if, yeah, and, and that's really all. 
like that I can feel that uh, and I'm happy with it literally one drop for the rails all four rails one drop for the bar uh, barrel I'm also going to put a drop in the very top of the slide and I'm going to use that same drop for the, op whoops, the opening where the barrel where the barrel slides through so it, it actually does uh, come through there so I'm going to put a little bit there and a little bit where the recoil spring assembly is just like that I might put uh, a, a better, better drop in there in the rails and then I'll, that'll work itself in when I uh, when I pull the slide to the rear and let it go I don't I don't put any lubrication on the recoil spring assembly so I'm ready to put it back together again I'm going to drop, drop the barrel down into the hole and let it go It'll fall into place, hopefully. I'm going to take the pointy, whoops, the pointy end recoil spring assembly goes forward, just like that. I'm going to depress it a little bit and make sure that it seats down into the lug. When you turn the weapon uh, sideways, it should be it should be uh, level. Okay, so that's the other thing. Then I'm going to put the two front rails into the, the slots here and here and as I pull the slide to the rear I also want to make sure that I keep the slide down on the frame so that the two rear rails go into the slots as well I'm going to pull it straight back and lock the slide back in place. Then I'm going to push the takedown lever up. I'm gonna take the yellow sear deactivation lever and push it back up. And then I'm going to release the slide stop and function check. So for me, a function check is to simply uh, point the weapon in a safe direction and actuate the trigger. Now, if the slide falls off, you did it wrong. Uh, if the slide stays on there, uh, so far so good. I'm gonna take, run the slide a couple times, point the weapon in a safe direction, and I will actually run the slide and maybe pull the trigger uh, one or two times just to make sure that everything is working properly. And this one is. Okay, so there it is. Not too difficult. Last thing I want to do is make sure that it's loaded and ready to go. I hope this helped. Uh, feel free to leave uh, comments and suggestions. I like hearing from you guys. And uh, thanks for watching.